I just got access to the new Flow with Neo. This is going to be the first time I use it to see what's possible. They just gave me an invite code on X. So if you're interested, check out X, see if you can get in. They, like every now and then they're posting like posts with a lot of invite codes. Or if you message them or you get in their DMs, they can give you an invite code as well. So it's really exciting. It has infinite activity, context, and delivery. And so some of the use cases of this, they've got a little, a couple of things where you can analyze TikToks, analyzing her TikTok. There's an entire marketplace where you can actually buy knowledge bases, which are like cost effective, 99 cents up to $5. I'm not sure about the entire range of it, but you can actually buy knowledge bases and then you can plug them into your workflow. So it's very like visual, which I love because I love using apps like Milanote and Craft. And so essentially you can see the conversational branches as you're building an agent. We've all been using Cursor. We've been using like IDEs and no code and stuff. This kind of feels like it's in between and it feels like it's the agent version of Flora Fauna as well. So even here, it's creating all these different branches and at different points, you can actually branch in different directions as well. So I love the user experience of this. There's a lot of different like agentic workflows coming out right now from different providers. There's Manus, there's GenSpark, there's so many different ones, Abacus AI. And I think a lot of people are using these for deep research, which you can probably do in Gemini and stuff like that. So I won't really be using it for deep research, which Gemini, ChatGPT, and if you're on Max, Claude can do as well. But there's a lot of different ways that people use deep research, but I feel that when you use deep research for agentic workflows, it feels like it's wasting the potential because you can already be building things when you already did the deep research elsewhere, and then you bring that information into it. So you're using the tokens on something that's a little bit more interactive. It's using the tokens more effectively for what it should be doing. Like when it's an agent, it's actually building stuff. So I feel that we should be in some cases separating the deep research in the places where it's better used for that. And then you can actually save your tokens to do things we're actually building using the information you've already gathered. I want to create something that's a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit fun. I'm going to create the instructions for a B212 helicopter. So there is a scene where Keanu Reeves, Neo, asks Trinity, can you fly that thing? And she says, not yet. She calls Tank and says, Tank, I need pilot instructions for a B212 helicopter. Hurry. And so what we're going to do here, I'm going to use my ring. So this is my little ring here, my remote. We're going to change this to Claude 3.7. And then I'm going to ask it. So we're not in agent mode yet. I'm just going to ask this a question. Let's say that the prompt is tank. I need instructions for a pilot program for a B212 helicopter. Hurry. Can you create a PRD for me, a product requirements document, knowing that it's going to be matrix themed, but also we want to make sure that we're not using like real B212 helicopter instruction because it's just for fun. It's just for demonstration purposes only. So can you write me the PRD for a website, a web app that will be deployed through Flowith? where it can show me an interactive website where it will show us how to fly a B212 helicopter using as many educational frameworks as possible to make it interactive, fun, a learning experience that would decrease that learning time from just being reading a manual. Can we do that? Can you write me a PRD for that? So this is remote from Japan. It is the Sanwa Supply BT Ring, and then I think it's the 5BK. So make sure you get the five. There is another one, which I accidentally bought. It's the three, but it doesn't have the scrolling. So as you saw here, I can actually click here and you can scroll up and down inside menus and stuff like that. So when you click this, we can actually scroll inside it. So this one is so much better. I don't know what I'm going to do with the smaller one anymore, but this one is so much better and the mouse is more sensitive. So we've got Claude 3.7 here. We're going to start that. This is not an agent yet, so I deliberately turned off the agent. So we're just using 3.7 Sonnet to ask that question. Once we get that answer, once it does the PRD, there we go, we will copy that PRD and turn on the agentic button because we don't want it to do it where you did not clearly say what the vision is, the core objective, all of this stuff. So it's very important that when we're doing no code, we actually map out the PRD first, otherwise you're going to waste all of your tokens. You're going to build yourself into a corner and you won't know what you were actually trying to do in the first place. So when you're building, we need to have two things. We need to have one, um, one, which is your vision, get a clear vision in your head for exactly what you want in your mind's eye to be. And then number two, be able to clearly articulate that vision to AI. 
or to the model or to the agentic workflow. Anything that you're using, we want to be able to clearly articulate that to the computer to be able to have it create that. Because if you're building, yes, there is that funny saying, jump off a cliff, build a plane on the way down. You can do that, but it depends what type of plane you're building, how fast you're falling, how big is the cliff, what are you going to be doing? How fast are you at problem solving? Do you know how aerodynamics work, which is like Python and all that kind of stuff. So you can build a plane on the way down, but if you don't have the right equipment, like you can't build a plane if you don't have anything on you. So the thing is, there is that funny saying, but there are nuances to it. No code. You can't just be winging the whole thing. Cause if you don't know what you're doing, you actually can't, you can't wing it. So let's see if we can go here. So I'm just going to go here, copy. Let's increase the width. I love that. What'd it get? Yeah, it would have shrank because it increased the width. Okay. So we've got this here. I'm just going to right click. We're going to copy this and then we're going to go up to here now. And now that we have that, can we change it to Gentic now? So can we go here? So I think this would require agent mode. Yes. So we're going to now change it to agent mode and then here. Now that you have the complete PRD of what we're trying to do, can you create that for us using the PRD? I want it to be deployed in any way possible so we can see this whole thing complete so we can demonstrate this as a video to the audience on X. There we go. So it's zoomed out. Oh my gosh, that's great. So it's zoomed out. It's using the PRD from the first section. So now it's going to use its Gentic skills to create this PRD, this one here that I created with 3.7 Sonnet. It knows all of what it needs to be. And then now it's going to create, it's going to use the PRD. There we go. So here we can right click that and let's go here. We copy this content, paste like that. I had to touch the keyboard. Just have, it didn't have paste for some reason. There we go. So now it is going to absorb the PRD from here. And now we're going to put it into this side. I love that it shifts that float. That's great. My rim light just died. That's okay. It's still green in the background. So if we click this now, we can see it's planning. We're going to make this bigger here. So that's what it's doing here. It's developing UX, UI concepts and basic interactive. There we go. See, it's adding all of these new things here. So we're going to see, can we, oh, yeah, we can drag that. That's good. So it's analyzing the PRD. Oh man, that's great. So there's the flight academy. We're going to make this bigger here now. So we're going to focus on this. Man, the UX is really nice. So it's for technology enthusiasts, educational technology professionals, matrix film franchise fans, and casual users in the helicopter situ simulation. Good. It knows all of this now. It has all of that was copied exactly. So it copied the exact PRD, which is very impressive, like exactly the same. You can see it's the same. Okay. So then now here it's planning again, and then here up to develop the UX concepts and develop the first core loading modules. Oh, there we go. It did it. Oh, damn. Oh, okay. It did it. It just took a little bit longer than I, I thought I was being impatient. So there's the training program and it loads the construct. Oh my cockpit familiarization. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. So pre-flight protocol. Damn. Okay. It's got the safety protocol. This is very good. Begin mission. Okay. Exit training system power. Okay. So this is a little bit funky in this bit here, but I think the part of being able to see all of this gets, so if we go back to the main menu, this is great. So the mission archives, operator log system preferences. So if we jack out, it's cool. It's using a lot of the language of the matrix. It's using the actual typography from the matrix, which is really cool. And let's get full screen. Wow. That's so cool. There we go. So operator logs, let's see what that is. Whoa. Okay, cool. 
So the flight controls, cockpit familiarization, mission briefing. It's very impressive that it knew like what the theme of the matrix would be. I love that. So if we go back to the main menu, that's really good. Okay. So system preferences, it's locked. <laughs> Only the operator can do that. That's really funny. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. So to start the training program, this is where we've got all of this cockpit familiarization, pre flight protocol, and then all these maneuvers are still locked. They will unlock as we get to them. Safety protocol reminder. Very good. Nice. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Like very happy with that. It made this by itself. Um, I think it's still making and refilling the actual modules as we go here. So develop the first core set of learning modules. So the reason why they were locked is because it's still making them. So right now you can see it's doing the learning modules, simple maneuvers and all that. So they were actually locked, but because we're in this website, we're able to at least play around with it while it's still building it. So here it's thinking right now. Yep, it is doing it. I've got a couple of things that I want to upload to it, which is I've got some funny graphics as well that I want to pop into there. So I might pop that into, so here's something I prepared earlier for flow with. I actually got a picture of the B212 helicopter and then I put it into chat GPT and then I took a screenshot of it, which made it into landscape. And then I put that into dream machine and then dream machine made it move. So I'm going to upload that. So that can be the wallpaper of the website. Uh, this is hosted on an app called Milanote. And then I right click, get the source file of that. And then, so the website will actually just be like hosting the video as a background. So then at least it's got that happening underneath as well. So we'll have that extra layer. <laughs> So right now it's developing the simple maneuvers. So it's actually building a few more stages here. How many more are there? There's, oh, there's quite a lot. So we might just leave this going and we'll let this turn into a time-lapse and we can come back to it later. This is very impressive so far. I think what I will do is I'll post this now so I can start editing this so people can already see what it can do. So I will see you in the next one.